Now to Manchester United. Ralph Rannick started with a win against Crystal Palace on Sunday. They face young boys in the Champions League tonight. United already through as group winners and Rannick will hand starts to Dean Henderson and Donny van der Beek tonight. We need to keep the positive momentum and um, uh, our ethos is to win games uh, even if we maybe play with a few uh, a few new players and fresh players it's still it's still important that we win the game and by the way the first game in this group um, we lost uh, at young boys and so we still need to make up for that uh, and uh, it's clear no matter with which kind of players we will start tomorrow we definitely want to win the game well, it was midfielder Fred that scored the winner in Rannick's first game in charge. He scored the only goal against Crystal Palace on Sunday. And Manja Matic believes the Brazilian and Scott McTominay don't get the credit they deserve. They don't get enough prize because uh, always uh, people who are scoring goals get, get prize after the games. But uh, um, sooner or later they will get uh, what they deserve and uh, I think that game by game they are better and better. They give us stability so they have to just continue to work in, in this way and I'm sure that they will have a bright future. Thoughts of Nemanja Matic. Let's get the thoughts of Phil. Uh, so it is young boys for Manchester United. Uh, already through as group winners uh, with Rannick trying to get his message across to players. How handy is the timing of this game? Well, very handy because, well, young boys are at the bottom of the group, I think. Um, so, yeah, it should, I wouldn't say be comfortable, but it should be, it should be a, a good win for, for Man United. So he's almost experimenting, isn't he? You know, I think as we've said that Donny van der Beek comes into the side I mean he's not been utilised a lot he joined the club high price tag uh, for my axe he's a fantastically uh, talented young player and we've seen glimpses of that uh, over the last month um, and we know what Henderson offers in goal so yeah the fact that he can make changes he's confident um, it's handy that they can probably work on the, the pressing philosophy a little bit more in this game but but yeah, it, it adds to the momentum, doesn't it? Since since they lost to Watford, they, they've gone four games unbeaten. I think that's what they're trying to build this snowball effect, you know, he heading into the Christmas fixture, which compared to the other team, quite, I wouldn't say easy, but they favour Man United to, to pick up points and, and get back into the top four and, and put pressure on the other team. So it's a nice period for... For uh, and again, it's this game. Just I would say it's a, it's a dead rubber or it's a free hit, but it's a game where they'd expect it to win, and they can they can try and implement its philosophy more. Yeah, because it, it is interesting, isn't it? What what he will do? That unchanged team against Crystal Palace, he, he tweaked it tactically and and put in what he wanted them to do. So do, does he see this? It is a Champions League game. I, I don't want to get away from that, but almost. As, as you said, a, a free here, a training session. Uh, I know it's a Champions League game, but to try and get them to learn that system more, or does he give others uh, a chance to get some minutes? We, we heard Donny van der Beek might well get a run out, uh, Dean Henderson as well. So th there might be a bit of both. Yeah, absolutely, Rob. I think, I think you're right. As if, if there was ever a fixture in the Champions League when you already qualified, it is this one on, on such a big stage to... You said to see how people cope, obviously, under the new manager, uh, with the new system, to see it might even be another formation change. We don't know. But, yeah, for sure, I, I feel this is a game where he, he could experiment a little bit, not too much. But, yeah, he, he's right. We've just heard clips from his presser there that he wants to go and win it. And, and that's what he needs to instill. Manchester United, big club, winning mentality, get that back keep this run going, all those kind of boxes need to be ticked and tonight will be no different. Yeah, he, he wants his squad to be, in his words, pressing monsters. Uh, how impressed were you with, with what you saw and how they started on that front? Yeah, I think the past few games, even when, when Michael Carrick was in charge, you could see a little dif different mindset in philosophy. Uh, yeah, pressing monsters, I mean, that philosophy takes... Time. I remember when Jurgen came in 
started his game press um, and people questioned whether Liverpool could sustain that in the first season, certainly, and then they faltered in, uh, in January, people saying they were tired. Is it the right time to, with such a congested football period over Christmas, to try and implement that high press, that, that, that gig and press, that really in-your-face uh, style of, uh, of defensive play? I don't know. Yes, he wants to do it. Will that lead to soft tissue injuries? Possibly. So he has to be very careful navigating the next sort of six, seven games. Yeah, because it is December. It is the busiest period of the season. And tell me, I mean, uh, if, if you're a professional footballer at Manchester United, you're going to be fit, aren't you? Uh, that goes without saying. But is this a different type of fitness and intensity then? Is that the worry? Yeah, for sure. And I, I think it's, we see certain players have got that in abundance, but it's getting the whole team in the defensive phase to, if they use that sort of five, four second rule to try and win the ball back, if that's the philosophy, to get everyone to buy in. We see individual, see Rashford do it, see Ronaldo do it at times, but then he's not being backed up uh, by supporting players. So, perhaps that maybe have been uncomfortable to press for, for that period of time. Uh, and getting that mentality in in their psyche, that's the key, really. So, yeah, it, it will take time, but they're all going to pass through it. They all want to do well. You know, they're sitting, what, three points or fourth in the Premier League at the moment. You know, there's still a lot to play for. So, so yeah, it's managing that squad. But as we alluded to earlier, it gives opportunities for some of the fringe players to, if Ranić does rotate, to get back in the side. Yeah. Um, he, he went with that four, two, two, two. I'll make sure I get the right number of twos in there. Um, <laughs> with two players you mentioned, Marcus Rashford as the second striker alongside Cristiano Ronaldo. So is this, is this the perfect world? It allows Ronaldo to play, uh, you know, and get the best out of him, but also allows Ranick to, to employ his players and play the way he wants. Well, first of all, what is the best for out of Ronaldo because he's scoring goals uh, still. He's still a threat. He's, he's still trying his hardest for the team, doing everything right. Um, but, yeah, I, I guess it can do. Look, uh, people question and say, well, Ronaldo's not going to track back and he's not going to press. But he actually does. You know, again, he's another model professional that will work hard and buy into any manager's philosophy. So, yeah, he'll have legs around him that that will that will help him. But, Getting the best out of him, well, the guy keeps scoring goals, Rob. You know, what, what more do you want from him? Yeah, yeah, um, I hear what you're saying. Uh, excellent performance from Fred, wasn't it, against Crystal Palace? How much is that another bonus of a new manager? Suddenly players uh, needing to prove themselves. Yeah, you get that immediate lift, don't you? You know, and as you said, fringe players up their game and, and sense an opportunity if the match has gone in and said, right, this is a clean clean slate, show me what you've got. Uh, but I think Fred has been uh, been in great form all season, to be honest with you. I think maybe he's come to the, into the limelight because it's not been Bruno Fernandes' best season in, in the Manchester United shirt, that's for sure. He's been a little bit bad. But Fred seems to be get more involved in the creative side of, of things. And obviously with that goal at uh, the weekend, his confidence is going to be sky high. Um, but I've been impressed with Fred. We've heard Matic talk about him and being an unsung hero in midfield. And I, I echo those that, that statement because he is. He's very, very good. Uh, he can put his foot in. He covers the ground a lot. Uh, everything you want from a, a midfielder. He's eight years of age, so he's probably matured and he's realised he needs to up his game, be more involved, have more of an impact in, in the Man United shirt. And maybe this is the season we start seeing the best of Fred. Yeah. Uh, Chelsea, of course, won this competition last season, despite changing manager mid-season. So uh, that would be a nice thing, Rannick. Here we go at the end of his six months. There you go. That's a Champions League uh, trophy for you there. So how high will this be in his priorities? I think there's a few other teams that will have something to say about that, Rob. That's for sure. Um, is it a priority? I think it would be a nice bonus. But, but no, I feel that challenging 
in the Premier League, getting on a good run, being on the coattails of the Chelsea's, of, of, of Liverpool and City, that's where Man United want to be. They don't want to be, well, it's 11-point gap at the moment, can be closed. Um, but no, getting back in the Champions League positions, solidifying themselves, um, yeah, and then a good deep run into the Champions League, as I said, is a bonus. But I can't see Rannick going, this is our agenda this season. Yep. Let's have a look at what they got in December, because it can change seasons, can't it? And, and actually looking at that run of fixtures, with all due respect to the teams they face, uh, if you're Ralph Rannick, uh, maybe you would have hand-picked those games, wouldn't you? What will they be looking for from this lot? Yeah, I, I think you're right. I don't think there's no disrespect meant on any of the other teams, but I feel that that Man United would be looking for maximum points over the Christmas period, and you don't see why not if they are building on this momentum from Man Nick, and they're going to get better, more organised, more pressing in the faces, win back position in the opponents, deep in the opponents, have to create more chances. You know, you'd expect them to to be un unbeaten, but um, it's been a weird. Premier League, isn't it? We've seen obviously the likes of, of, of Norwich pick up. Uh, I think they done well against Spurs last weekend. I probably could have could have got a couple of goals against them. Uh, that won't be easy. Um, yeah, I, I'd expect Rangnick to want or demand maximum points over the Christmas period. Mm.